Good evening. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Olivia Trombino. On behalf of the Church of the Ascension, we welcome all our guests and visitors. We gather as family to live out our mission, proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as missionary disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. We are blessed to have you here with us today. Today's Mass is being live streamed. We are united today in both person and with our online family. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel, assisted by Deacon Gary. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased Alfonso Salalia. Kindly silence your phones at this time. Church offices and food pantry are closed Monday in observance of President's Day. The Ash Wednesday Mass schedule is 9.15 a.m., 12.10 p.m., and 7 p.m. There will also be a family prayer service with ashes at 4.45. Additionally, Eucharistic adoration will be offered on Ash Wednesday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you to all who have contributed to the success of this past week's winter shelter ministry to help our guests feel very welcomed. Adult Faith Formation presents Get Into the Word Weekday Bible Study. Explore and engage with Jesus as portrayed in the Gospel of Matthew. This adventure begins this Thursday at 10 a.m., and will meet weekly in the conference room. For more information, contact Bridget Pizarro. The first of two Night of Columbus fish fry dinners is March 3rd. Tickets are in sale in the Commons after Mass. Our annual diocesan appeal can't succeed without you. We need your support to achieve great things and make the soil of our parish fertile. Thank you for your prayerful consideration. And now a word from our YOA team leaders about Eucharistic adoration. Good evening. My name's Ellie Steffens, and you saw in your seats all the opportunities we have for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament this Lent. I have the honor of introducing you to Elmore. He is a member of the youth group at Ascension, and he goes to Bayside High School, and he wants to share with you some remarks that he's set up for tonight. Here's Elmore. For me, personal prayer is like a getaway from the relentless chaos that is everyday life, like an oasis of hope in the sandy dunes of existence. My God with bond, de my, oh, wow. my bond with God deepens every time I pray because I'm literally talking to him. Should I have a rough day at school because I got slammed with homework or whatever the case may be, I turn to him and praying has given me a sort of hope for mankind. Hope that wars end, disease vanished, and everyone is united as one peaceful earth. Even when I'm not praying, I feel God's presence every day. I remember one time I was walking outside in my school's courtyard and suddenly felt happy like, wow, this is life, and life feels good. Um, 
Walking through the quiet courtyard, surrounded by nature and the great sky's embrace, made me feel great appreciation for God's creation, life. I mean, seriously, I'd take this over living in a hot ball of magma any day. <laughs> but seriously, the more you pray, the more aware you become, the more grateful you become, the more closer you become. Coming to the Lord with your spiritual wounds is wiser than letting them bleed out. If you think apples do a good job at keeping doctors away, just wait till you see what praying can do to the devil and temptation. A great place for that would be adoration. All jokes aside, or rather poor attempts at such, being closer to God is a go-to way of reinforcing your faith, which is why I would like to invite you all to adoration. Note that we are the church. There wouldn't be a church if no one attended. Yet here we all are, celebrating in the house of God. We must be the change we want to see and assume responsibility of making sure our brothers and sisters are keeping their faith tight. Yes, we are a community, but we are more than that. We are a family. We shall exhibit this by praying together as one in communal prayer and during adoration. Remember, we are a family, a church united under one good and gracious God the Father. And as one, we, sh we shall strengthen our bond with him together. Thank you. Would you please rise and greet those around you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your, and your spirit. spirit. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday in the ordinary time. I'd like to invite you to celebrate this Mass also for the intention of this country, for independence, for the leadership, and also for unity and coming together as God's family. Let us acknowledge your sins and ask for God's love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. we pray almighty God that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or your sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Apollo or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to the law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, Go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. 
For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. In the February 6th edition of the Catholic Virginian, there was an article re referencing Pope Francis as saying, long homilies are a disaster. <laughs> and he advises keeping homilies under 10 minutes. So in an attempt to comply with the Pope's guidance, I will only scratch the surface of my topic tonight. My homily is based on three verses, one from each reading. My verse from the first reading, which comes from Leviticus, is, You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. My verse from the second reading, which comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, is, We are all temples of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in each of us. And my gospel reading verse is, For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Many of you know that I went through nurses training after high school over 50 years ago. One of our major rotations was psych psychiatric nursing, and it was there that I first learned of the opposing psychological concepts of cognitive consonance, which means there's a balance between what we believe and the values we hold and our behavior. Cognitive dissonance there is an inconsistency between our thoughts, beliefs, and values in how we behave. I apologize for the use of the psychological terms, but I hope you will soon see why I'm using them. I expect <clears throat> when you heard our three readings this evening, you experienced cognitive consonance because what you heard and what the church teaches us to do coincides with those principles we hold and then our behavior follows. For instance, I expect when you heard the first reading, you, you shall, shall not bear, bear hatred for your brother or, or sister in your heart, heart. You, you may have thought, have thought I, might I might not, not love, love everybody, everybody but, but I, I think, think saying I hate them is too strong of a word. In and overall, overall, and and overall, overall you, are you are generally satisfied, satisfied with how you get along with others. others. The second reading, we are all temples of God and the Spirit of God dwells in each of us, so you accept that we are all temples of God and that the Holy Spirit is in each of us. And the Gospel reading, if you love only those who love you, what recompense will you have? You likely would agree, I know I need to love more than just those who love me. So this is cognitive consonance. Now, now I, want I want to move, move from our church, church group here and, and take, take a wider view, view one of church and country. February is Black History Month. Month. I expect there, there are at least some of you who question, why do we need a Black History Month? Or, if we're going to have a Black History Month, then why don't we have a White History Month too? Because after all, aren't we looking for equality? And we might even justify that position by saying, wouldn't the Catholic Church support equal treatment of others, whether black or white, and not selecting one over the other? We weren't supposed to bear hatred or to treat others unequally, which comes from our first reading. We are supposed to treat each other as temples of the Holy Spirit, our second reading. And we are to love others who are different from ourselves from the Gospel reading. And we, and we might, might even justify the position of wanting a White History Month by pointing out one of our country's founding principles. In the second paragraph of our Declaration of Independence, it states, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. So would our country want to treat any of its citizens differently? And of course, the sad truth in both cases is our church and our country have and still do in many cases treat others unequally. So when this is brought to our attention, in honesty we have to admit that we too, either consciously or subconsciously, 
treat others unequally because of their skin color, because they have a worldview different from our own, or they express themselves in different ways than we do. And this causes us to have cognitive dissonance. Our behavior is inconsistent with our beliefs. We say we see all people as temples of the Holy Spirit, but then don't treat them the same way. Our behavior is not the model of Jesus, which we hear and read in Scripture. On the front page of the February 6th, the Catholic Virginian, there was an article entitled, Learning from the Painful Past of Black Catholics. It recapped a presentation given at Immaculate Conception Catholic Church in Hampton on January 21st by Shannon D. Williams, Associate Professor of History at the University of Dayton. She shared the sad fact of a Catholic Church that failed in loving their brothers and sisters, our first reading, that failed in seeing those people of color as temples of the Holy Spirit, our second reading, and showed, and showed a lack, a lack of, love of love for those who were different than themselves, than themselves our, gospel our gospel reading. reading. A, myth a myth that, that Professor Williams, Williams debunked, debunked was, was that, the that the U.S. Catholic Church, Church was a reluctant and benevolent participant in modern, modern slavery. slavery. Not, Not true. true. The Catholic, the Catholic Church, Church was among, was among the, the largest, largest corporate, corporate slaveholders slave holders in, America, in America, according, according to Professor Williams. Williams. And she, and, she said, and she and she gave, gave the, the sad, sad historical, historical context, context for this. For this. Pope, Pope Nicholas, Nicholas V, V in 1452 authorized, authorized Portugal, Portugal to conquer, conquer the Saracens, the Saracens a, reference a reference made to non-white non people of Muslim, of Muslim descent, descent. And I quote, and I quote to, invade, to invade, enslave, enslave and put and into perpetual, perpetual servitude, servitude any non-Christian non in Africa. Africa. End quote. End quote. 41, 41 years, years later, later Pope, Alexander Pope Alexander VI, VI in 1493, extended, extended much, much of these of doctrines, doctrines into the Americas. The Americas. That, support that support for slavery, for slavery by the Catholic, Catholic Church, Church lasted, lasted 337, 337 years. years. It was, it was only, only in 1839, 1839 that, Pope that Pope Gregory XVI condemned, condemned slavery. slavery. Sadly, Sadly, even in the 1950s and 60s, the years, the years of, desegregation of desegregation and the early the civil rights movement, rights movement the U.S. The US Catholic, Catholic Church was not in the forefront of desegregation, of desegregation and civil rights. civil rights. As per, as per Professor, Professor Williams, Williams, it was, in many, in many cases, one of the, one of the largest, largest practitioners, practitioners of segregation. Of segregation. Of course, it would be wrong to say there weren't those Catholic leaders, both clergy and lay, who spoke out bravely in support of civil rights. But unfortunately, too many Catholics were willing to go along to get along and not stir the pot of the white privileged philosophy ethos that has been part of this country since its foundation. People, unfortunately, like me. I was, I was wrong, wrong to have, to that, have attitude, that attitude, and I am, and I am working, working on changing my attitude in hopes of bringing my cognitive dissonance into cognitive consonance. I'm, I'm going to stop there, there but, I but I want to end, end with a quote from Romans, Romans chapter 14, 14, verse 17. 17. The, kingdom the kingdom of God, God is not, not a matter of eating or drinking, or drinking but of but justice, justice, peace, and the joy that is given by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The Lord calls us to love one another as yourself. Let us bring to him our prayers for the needs of our world. For Pope Francis, that he promote to the world the inclusion of all peoples, and that he foster the holiness of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations and government leaders will learn to work work for universal universal peace peace and prosperity. prosperity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this parish parish community community allows God's God's spirit to dwell in our hearts hearts and minds. minds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as meek as lambs, we may respond with the docility as God leads us through our annual diocesan appeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick and injured especially the Turkey and Syrian earthquake victims, find relief and healing through our prayers. And for those, especially in our parish, Jeanette and John Martino, Oscar Loren, and Walter Kilpadlow, father of Frank Kilpadlow, those names of the chronically ill listed in our bulletin, those names listed in the Book of Prayers and the Commons, and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ever-growing list of earthquake fatalities and our beloved dead, especially for our deceased weekend mass intentions, Alfonso Salalita, Jack Winner, Bruce Navarrete, and Lois Barnish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of of compassion, compassion, lift lift up up our efforts efforts of love and grant grant these petitions. petitions. We ask ask this through Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. seated. Bread of life and cup of We come as gift to you. Change our hearts, fill us with peace. Transform our lives anew. Open our eyes so that we might see your presence in one another. Your light poured out in love today unites us all in you. Loving Lord, Creator God, open our eyes to see the good that comes in each of us that called the world to be. And when we fail to see the good, when friendships falter and crumble, give us the courage to forgive that we may live. Word, O Son of God, your love shows us the way that we may live in harmony and from you never. 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaselessly thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we are claimed. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings the salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us when we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O oh Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, for whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought to us, we entreat you, sanctify this gift by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into the hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, evening he took the choice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy and gave the choice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the choice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us and the world. By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, when he left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil, gracious grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it, you are apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. We ask if you're watching us live stream, please put a note in the chat box.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sup of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Tend the ground. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that you may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Well, all, uh, as you have heard, uh, Lent is coming up. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. It's not a holy day of obligation, but we get more people. It's not a holy day of obligation, but we normally get more people for Ash Wednesday than almost any other uh, Sunday of the year. So come on in uh, and get your ashes. They're free. Um, so we do have some responses from the vision cards that uh, many of you have filled out regarding worship. And here are two responses. Knowing that I am loved just as I am, believing that opens my mind and heart to receive God's love into my being. It opens my eyes to hearing the words of guidance from the Holy Spirit. Being loved unconditionally permits me to see God in others and love them the same way and receive his joy. Now, I think if there's one of the toughest things that we have to deal with is how much God loves us because we just can't believe it because sometimes we really have a tough time loving ourselves. Uh, the second one is, I said this prayer before I began my daily devotions. Within days, I found myself just talking to Jesus about the day ahead and spending a bit more time just resting in his presence. Then the day really began. You know, when you kind of turn things over to, to God that you aren't carrying all that weight yourself will really help you. So please pick up a black book on your way out. Uh, in there, there are daily uh, reflections. Uh, at this time, I would also remind you that uh, we have some parish council members out at the welcome desk. So if there's anything that you're too afraid to talk to Father Daniel about, talk to them at the information desk. Uh, are there any visitors with us this evening? Any brave visitors that might stand up and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from? So your names? I'm sorry, your names? Cisa? Lisa? Lisa? I'm Leo. Leo? From where in New Jersey? I'm from Monroe. Monroe, New Jersey. 
Okay, okay. good. And now, what brings you here tonight? Ninetieth birthday. Our, well, tell her happy birthday from us. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Well, please stand for a closing blessing. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. God.